faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. Karaba, 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 Karaba. 
Lerobo costo porama papa carapa capa carama. Ner romon de cande de vocora vaca rama de rede. Zer romo to corra maca rapa carama carata. Zer romon do corrende becere de. Blessings to you, blessings to you, every single person. How many of you all listen? That broadcast that we did last night was so, so powerful. It was so, so powerful. Last night, my son was telling me that when I wear red, it seems like I have a different anointing or, or a different anointing on me. That everything is powerful, but when I wear red, 
And I told him it's true. Number one, colors, hairstyles, there are different things that activate what God wants to release at the moment. You don't wear lingerie to a church service. Well, wait, hold on. That means you ain't going to have them. Wait, 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 wait. Here's what I mean by that. That's not your main garment. You have it as an undergarment. And you don't wear a, you don't wear, you don't wear an apron to a wedding. Because you're not cooking. The apron is for cooking. You don't wear a police officer uniform <laughs> to your child's game. Because you don't want the people think that you're arresting them while you're sitting next to them. And so that uniform is for police offering, uh, police officer duties. You don't wear a suit to a basketball game. Because then you're not going to be able to exercise much of your body in the game. Because the suit may tear. You can't run as fast. Um, or you may not have the ability to do certain moves that you would do if you was in the proper attire for sports. You don't wear your best dress to the gym because you're going to go work out. And saints, I encourage you all this year to take the fitness that you desire. I encourage all of you all this year to take the health that you desire. If you're not happy with your stomach, if you're not happy with your weight, if you're not happy with your health, gradually take the initiative towards it. Now, if you are someone that wants to lose weight, um, there are things that the Father will lead you into and you got to move into it gradually so that you don't cause yourself to become sick. Where God will have you eating less meats or less breads. Because bread and meat is what causes you to gain lots of weight immediately. If you eat bread. Now I'm about to get into the word of the Lord, but this is part of everything. Breads and meats allow you to gain weight immediately. So if you eat chicken, if you eat stuff like that, that's what makes you weighty. You see what I'm saying? If you eat meat, that's what makes you Weighty. If you meet, eat breads, breads make you gain weight. If you want to lose weight, you just decrease off of those type of things. And stick to things that are on the warmer side. Warm things. Because here's what happens when you eat too much stuff or drink too much stuff that's cold. You shut down your digestive system at the speed it's supposed to go. Especially if your digestive system is not already fast. See what I'm saying? Some people already have a fast um, metabolism so they're able to eat certain things at their will and it doesn't affect them. But if you know that your metabolism is uh, a turtle... And it does not move as fast as you want. Um, then you can move into warmer things. Um, teas. If you drink garlic tea, it'll help with your blood pressure. Your blood pressure will get down. I learned that from my mother. My mother, I told you a story where the woman had AIDS and my mother... Heard the Holy Spirit say, give the woman garlic soup. And my mother cooked garlic soup for the woman and she was free from AIDS. And she was a woman of the streets and a freak in the bed. And um, and the Lord had mercy on her. And my mother gave her that tea and she was diagnosed by the doctor that she had that cancer. And she was about to die. When she went back to the doctor, the cancer was gone. And she had some other diseases that she had picked up from that type of lifestyle. They were gone too. All of her diseases were gone. But the Holy Spirit spoke that to my mother about um, 
about that. Look at this watch that my mother gave me. My mother gave me this watch. It's a Michael Jordan watch. Look at this watch here. It's Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, not the opposite way on there, none of that. Give me a Michael Jordan watch. And so, garlic tea, if you do drink it, you can use mint. And uh, you can chew gum for a matter of time. Let me just say this to you. You don't want to chew gum too much because it can cause acid reflex in your belly. And when you get older in years, the backlash of it could be deadly. Now, this is a part of the word of the Lord because... It's nothing if you live wealthy according to money, but live broke according to health. It's nothing if you're in pain and you're in diseases. So what I'm prophetically doing here is prevention. So listen to what I'm saying on here. Don't think that, ah, ah okay, this is health. No, no, no. I'm going to talk to you about the other things. But right now, the spirit of God is saying, make sure you take care of you. Because, saints, it hurts God when he can buy you a house, buy you a car. But it's like your health is declining off of your decisions. Now, we all know that God can heal. But, saints, it's like when we have children. When we have children, our children might catch colds. Our children might catch flus. Our children might catch different sicknesses. Now, we know that we have the power to heal them. But that may be something that they catch because of a wrong decision, whether touching things, putting their hands in their mouth or just different things that children do. OK, and so in those scenarios, even though we have the power to heal, we still get affected by the fact that they got sick because we don't like to see our children sick. See, saints, I'll, and those of you all that have children, you'll understand this. Having a child is to open up your eyes on how God feels. If you have ever had children, you should understand God to the T by now. Because you love your children, but you don't let them do what they want. You love your children, but you don't let them decide what path they're about to go. You don't let your little three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old tell you, I'm about to move to another state. So hereby, you should understand God when he tell you, I'm not trying to get you to move to another state. See, your little children, your little children, you don't let them tell you, hey, I'm about to eat this today. I know that you prepared this for me, but I'm about to eat this. So thereby you should understand when the father said, I have not prepared for you to digest this or partake of this. You're going to eat this. This is what I want you to partake of. This is what I want in your system. You don't let your little child tell you which church they're going to. If you're going to church, you take them to the church you're going. Same way you can't let yourself decide what you're going to do concerning church. Because your little child doesn't have that authority. So why do you? You see, if you've ever had children, you should understand God to the T. Sometimes your child wants to play and it's cold outside and you know off of wisdom. If you play outside, you can catch a draft. It, the, the coldness can go to your chest, to your neck area, cause you to get a cold. So I'm not going to let you play out there at that time. The same way a lot of times you're telling God, let me play in this. Let me enjoy this. And God saying, no, it's not time. If you enjoy it right now, it'll bring sorrow to you. If you play with this right now, it'll break you. If you endure or, or, or engage this right now, it'll be the destruction of you. If you've ever had a child, you should understand God to the T. Because everything God tells you is in alignment with what you would have to tell your child once you have your child. Your child does not decide where they want to go. You tell your child, no, you're not going there. I'm not going there, so I'm not going to let you go. We're the same way as a child of God. You're not supposed to go where you want. The Bible said, lead not to your own understanding. That means that you have an understanding that causes witchcraft. You have an understanding that takes you to hell. You have an understanding that makes you grieve the spirit. 
Your understanding makes you lose anointings, lose mantles, lose favor. Your understanding creates your losses. So the Bible said, lean not to your own understanding because it only enters you into hell. You lean on that, but you fall right into eternal damnation. If you've ever had a child, you should understand God to the T. Because when God is leading you as his child, he doesn't let you do certain things, though you think it is right. Even though you think that I should go this path or I should do this or I should say this or I should connect with this. You would tell your child, no, don't connect with those neighbors. And your child like, why? I like that little girl. But you know that that little girl is underneath parents that hate you. And if that little girl is underneath parents that hate you, when that little girl gets around you, her parents are going to tell them to do stuff to you because you're underneath that parent that they don't like. And so you find yourself telling your child, no, you can't, you can't go down to that neighborhood. I won't go over to that house. No, you can't go over to the house because if you go over to the house, I know that they hate me. If they enter, you enter into their house, they might do something to you that I don't want happen to you and what I'm going to do because they hate me. In the same way, that's what the father does with you. There are people that hate him, but you're around them. And the father's like, Balaam, what are you doing around these people? These people hate me. Why are you around them? You represent me. Why, why, why do you seek their company? You represent me. Why do you seek their presence, their atmosphere, their words, their counsels, their appetites, their desires? Why do you seek their company when they're against me? So the Bible said bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts. And, and, and so there's a corruption anointing that's connected to people. There are people that are anointed to corrupt you. There are people that have an assignment to corrupt you. There are people that are assigned to bring you lower than the level that God is training you to be on. There are people that have a ability to stop the flow of the river of God in your belly. There are people that have the ability from Satan to stop your mind from going places with God, from thinking the way that God wants you to think, from walking the way that God wants you to walk, from feeling the way that God wants you to feel, from receiving what God wants you to receive. The Bible says, blessed is the man, anointed is the man, empowered is the man, prosperous is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But it says that that man, his meditation is the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Because even in the nighttime, you still got to be in meditation, because nighttime is the area where satanic agents are moving the most. Nighttime are the time when demons are looking and lurking for somebody to possess. Nighttime is the place where it looks like you're about to go to sleep, but you got to be watchful still. You still got to be on guard. You still got to go into a place of prayer and communication with God because the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he might devour you in the very hour when you think that you can sleep. In the very hour when you think that you can close your eyes could be the very hour that you become blind to all the things that God has taught you. So God, what he does is begins to pitch you into a place where he won't let you follow all of the regiments and all of the schedules and all of the ideas and all of the counsels and the morals of people that are not even anointed and people that have not even surrendered their being to God and people that have not put their life on the altar. And so he begins to separate you and sanctify you and you feel like that's your family member but you don't know that that's a demon sent from the pit of hell to lead you to hell and you think that that's your husband but you don't know that that's a demon sent from the pit of hell to lead you to hell and you think that that's your wife but you don't know that that's a demon sent from the pit of hell to lead you to hell and you think that that's your cousin and you think that that's your co-worker and you think that that's the person that you can trust and you think that that's the person that got the anointing. And you think that that's the person that got wisdom. And you think that that's the person that got power. But really they've been sent by the devil to take away your focus. Take away your grace. Take away your anointing. Take away your power. Take away your cry. Take away. And so what the Holy Spirit begins to do. Is the Holy Spirit is the author of letting you feel weird. 
Because there's something that if you don't let go of this, it'll create all of your slavery. If you don't let this go, it'll create all, all of your bondages. If you don't walk away, It'll create all of your captivity. That thought that stops you from even praying. Because when you went go pray, this thought has so much power that it messed up your atmosphere. And prayer comes to create discipline. But you lost your discipline because of a thought. You went go fast, but you stopped your fast because of a thought. You went go forgive, but you stopped your forgiveness because of a thought. You went go walk in kindness, but you stopped your kindness because of a thought. You went go repent, you went go stand in the place. Of strength with God. But now you went back into weakness and depression. Because of a thought. In these end times. There are new demons. When I say new demons. I don't mean that these demons have been created. I'm saying that these demons. Are being unleashed from the pit of hell. Even in the book of Revelation. It talked about. I believe it was the fifth angel. It began to talk about different angels that came and one of the angels came and had the keys of death and of hell and went down to the bottomless pit, unlocked the bottomless pit. And the word of God said that there was a locust that came up from the bottomless pit and this locust had power. It had power over man to hurt them. It didn't come to hurt the grass. It didn't come to hurt natural things. It came to hurt people. It came to destroy them. It came to cause torment. And the Bible said that people even prayed to die. I believe it was for a period of five months. So we see in the word of God that there are times where in the invisible realm, demons are roaming the earth. And there are demons that weren't there before. Now we know that this was talking about the book of Revelation, but we have to in the end times in the time where tribulation shall be. But saints, we're living in those times. And there are demons that are moving in the earth that have more authority than the demons that you've been encountering. Saints, I'm telling you that this is time for you to stop suffering with these little mediocre demons that really ain't got all that authority because there's demons that's higher ranked than them. And if you can't take out these demons that can hardly even move and hardly even plan and hardly can even plot, how are you going to do when the greater comes? How, what are you going to do when the greater comes? Because sometimes the, the thing that you think is an attack is the smallest. What are you going to do when the greater comes? The greater demons, the greater evil spirits, the greater deceptions. Now, listen to me, saints. The father spoke to me. And the father began to minister to me about. Protecting yourself when you're in connection with your prophet of God. And every single person, the reason why you're watching me is because the spirit of God quickened you to watch me. You're not watching me just because you ain't got nothing to do. You're not watching me just because you felt like it. You're not watching me just because you thought that it was a nice idea. 
You watching me because the spirit of God told you to watch me. And it's because I have a word in my mouth from the creator of the universe, the one that created all things, the God almighty. He spoke to me and told me to tell my people that when I send them to a ministry, stay connected to the minister of the ministry. One of the greatest failures and one of the greatest fumbles that has happened is that men and women put other people in charge and it goes against the idea that the father wanted. When God puts you in a ministry, don't, don't, don't take your eyes off of the minister. Keep your eyes on the minister. There will come a day where people that led you to the prophet will tell you, get away from the prophet. There will come a day, and some of you are, if you haven't already experienced it, you will experience it. Or if they did not lead you to the prophet, there will be people that never led you to the prophet that will pop up and tell you, you need to leave the prophet. It will happen if it hasn't already happened to you. And it will happen again. The day is here and the day will continue to be as where a child of God that is not watching will fall away. And the father spoke to me about the spirit of falling away. The father talked to me about a spirit of falling away. And some of you all have been a victim of the spirit of falling away. You know what happens when you fall away? That means that you have joy in doing something for God. But Satan sends something and stops all of your joy. He stops all of your momentum. He stops all of your focus, all of your fire, all of your passion, all of your enjoyment. And you become something that you never wanted to be. There's so many times people, they don't understand. They, 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 they don't understand that there's a spirit of falling away on their life. And so you get mad at your divine connection. You get mad at your prophet of God. You get offended at them. But what you don't see is that as soon as you become offended and as soon as you get angry, all type of stuff start happening in your life. And you may not vocalize it to people, but stuff start happening to you. And things start going wrong and you start getting attacked in secret and stuff start taking place. And it feels like all of a sudden you start having thoughts to go back to your old lifestyle and you can't fight or break or shake the thought that keep on bringing you into captivity and you don't got no authority and no dominion and you find yourself doing secret stuff and secret sin because you can't overcome because it was connected to that prophet you start talking to people that you never would even talk to you would have never sat at the table with that person, but you're underneath the spirit of falling away. The spirit of falling away make you connect with people you wouldn't even talk to a day in your life. You find yourself in conversations with people that you never would have spoke to. You find yourself at the table engaging people that you never would have engaged. You never would have even took the time to find out how they was doing. But now they're all in your face because of the spirit of falling away. The spirit of falling away will have you move as the greatest fool. You'll let people in your business that was never supposed to be in your business because you're underneath the spirit of falling away. People laughing at you and you can't even see it. You think that you're talking to them about your life, but what you don't know is that they're laughing at you and they're judging you and they're looking at you. Like, do you even know that I've been sent to mock your very life? That I hate the crown that you're wearing, that I hate the, the place that you're moving in, that I hate the authority you've been given, that I hate the fact that you have favor. I hate the fact that you got oil. I hate the fact that you've been called by God. I hate the fact that your name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and you can't see it because you're underneath the spirit of falling away. And the father spoke to me and told me, he said, son, tell my people that when they connect with the man of God, stay focused on the man of God. That's the man of God. When he's the man of God, he does not have a wife. He does not have children. He does not have family. He does not have friends. He does not have companions. He does not have affiliates. He does not have anybody. He's the man of God. And keep your eyes on him. The 
one of the worst things that people have done is that they have brought an attention to other people and the people are not who God wanted the focus to be on. And that's why those people are negligent with the focus. You meet a man of God talking about I want to meet their wife or I want to be I want to meet their children or I want to see who their brother is or I want to meet their mother. That's the foolishness that been happening. That's why people not stand the course with God because they're looking everywhere else other than when God sent them to look. When the Bible declared that that woman at Zarephath, when she met Elijah, God did not want her to look at Elijah's sons or Elijah's family or Elijah's past or Elijah's present. She wanted, she had to look at Elijah's instruction. That's the problem. People are not staying close to the prophet. They're not looking at their prophet. And it's not just my ministry. You know, there was, there was one of the daughters of someone else's ministry and they had wrote me and things like that. And I didn't respond because I got this law that if I know that you belong to another ministry, I'm not going to talk to you. I got this law because... If that's if I'm your man of God, then I, then I can talk to you. But if, if you got another man of God, I can't talk to you. But but I realize a lot of times people, when they connect with a ministry, they got other motives than the motive of God. And God can send you to a place and you can take on another spirit in that place because you never got understanding of why he sent you to it. Wow, wow, wow. Listen to what I just said. God can send you to a place and that's the wisdom of God. And you never sought understanding for why he put you in the place. So while you're in the place, the place actually destroys you because you have not found out the whole understanding of why you was even planted there. Imagine somebody is a janitor, right? And they get hired. When they get hired to be a janitor, right? They're inside of the janitor place and they're working as a janitor. All right, watch this here. Do you know that they're still missing? Because even though I got hired as a janitor, now I have to find out what is my specific assignment as a janitor. I know that I'm supposed to clean, but clean what? I can go inside of, uh, I can go inside of a, a place that didn't need to be clean or, or, or think uh, maybe uh, I'm supposed to travel all the way down the street. And I, I, I know that the boss got a place down the street. Maybe I'll just go clean. No, you, you got to find out where. If you a cook, you can't. You know that you're supposed to cook. But what am I supposed to cook? I, saints, I'm using different parables. And I, I command your dumb self to shut up. Because every time I talk to people, there's another spirit that talks to them after me. And I know this. I've experienced this in my life. And the father gave me a revelation that the devil always talks after me. You find that out in Genesis. It's the law of God is a law in the spirit that after God speaks, Satan sends the interpretation. After God speaks, Satan sends the interpretation. One time I was ministering on here. And, and I said something and somebody took one thing that I said and did it with their life and messed up their whole life. Why? Because of the law of the jackass. The law of the jackass is a spirit of deception that makes you can't see properly. It makes you take bits and pieces of what God said and you create a whole doctrine and you create a whole lifestyle and you didn't even receive the full word. You took just a little bit 
and you don't understand that the process is here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. You take one precept and there was another precept that was upon that. You took one line and there's another line that was upon line. You took there a little, but you didn't know here a little, but you didn't know that there was there a little that was going to come after here a little. A prophet is a fireball. A prophet is a fireball. When you watch a prophet, you watch them burn. When you watch a prophet, you see them on fire. When you watch a prophet, you see them in flames. When you watch a prophet, you see the volcano. You see the volcano erupt. You see the lava come out of their mouth. You see the lava come out of their words. You see the lava come out of their eyes. You see the lava come out of their reactions. A prophet is a fireball. Why do you think that the Bible said that God showed up to Moses in a burning bush? Because that burning bush was to show Moses of who he was. It was a mirror. That burning bush was to show Moses what he was. Let's go here. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, 37 says this. Matthew 10, 37 says this. Look at this here. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now this is the Lord Jesus talking, which is kind of scary. This is the Lord Jesus talking, which is kind of scary. He said, you love mother and father more than me. I know what this means because I have in my life done this scripture many of times. Here's what you must see in this text. There may come a time in your life where your mother, and I'm going to be very raw in here. And I must preach the gospel. There are some of you daughters on here. If your mother ever tells you to leave me, betray her and stay with me. If your parent comes to you and say, hey, uh, don't follow prophet Joshua Holmes no more. Uh, don't listen to him no more. Betray them. I'm going to preach the gospel and I'm not afraid of nobody. There are some of you parents on here. If your children come to you and they come to you and tell you, listen, mom, God gave me a revelation. Listen, dad, God gave me a revelation. And the Lord spoke to me and told me that we must leave prophet Joshua because I feel in my spirit uh, that, that we're not supposed to follow him anymore. Betray your children and follow me. Saints, listen to what I'm telling you. If your wife comes to you and say, baby, um, I don't think that we should follow Prophet Joshua Holmes. I don't think that we should walk with him no more. You know, I feel in my spirit there's our time to go betray your wife. If your husband comes to you and say, you know, baby, I think that we should leave Prophet Joshua Holmes. And as the covering, I believe that uh, God is taking us another direction. Betray your husband. And you say, Prophet, what is this? Is this you? Now you're teaching us to be out of order. 
The word of God says that there'll be two lying in the bed. One will be taken away and one will be left behind. Why is one of them being taken away? Because that one chose to stick with the spirit of God. They chose to stick with God's word. They did not get moved because of no marriage. They did not get moved because of no legs in the bedroom or no sex in the bedroom. Nothing was able to stop them from following God's will for their life. There's coming a day where God will judge the spouse that opposes the will of God for the other one. There are some of you all in my ministry, and as I stand before God, there are many of you all in my ministry that have been in my ministry that when your spouse spoke against me, now your spouse is either dead or they're sick. They're either dead or sick. And the reason why God did that and the reason why God is doing that is because that spouse is not supposed to take you to hell. That spouse is not supposed to make you miss heaven. That spouse is not supposed to make you air God. That spouse is not supposed to cause you to fail your divine assignment. Had many people in my ministry over these years. People come and go. I've seen their spouse either get sick or die. So for some of you all, this is not even something that is just a revelation. It's something that you experienced. And it's not because they spoke against President Trump. It's not because they spoke against the Bible scripture. It's not because they spoke against something that Jesus did in the Gospels. No, it's because they spoke against the prophet Joshua Holmes. And God's will is prophet Joshua Holmes for you. So sometimes you see your spouse, somebody going through something. And you feel bad. No, no, no. By your words, you shall be justified and by your words, you shall be condemned. Saints, I come to tell you that your spouse can condemn themselves talking against your prophet. And then you got those other spouses that mock you because you fall in your prophet. Yeah. I've had many of people that did that and became severely ill. And as I stand before God, they're either severely ill or they're dead in the grave in hell. Nobody goes to heaven for talking against a prophet. Nobody. Now, you can repent, but nobody goes to heaven talking against a prophet. Nobody. See, you might think that it's small, but God thinks it's big. He told Moses, go bring Miriam, go bring Aaron, tell them to meet me out here. Come on, let's go, let's go talk. Let's have a little talk. And the Bible said all Miriam was doing is just telling Aaron that I don't think that Moses should have married that woman. All she was just giving her opinion and God said, all right, I heard that. Uh, tell her, come on, let's meet. Let's talk. Let's have a talk together. And when God saw, by I struck her with leprosy. Aaron ran up to Moses and said, Moses, Moses, please. Moses, pray, 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 pray. She got struck with leprosy. Come on, please intercede for God. Why, why? Now tell me this. Why? Is Aaron asking Moses to pray? Because Miriam was not talking about, Miriam was not talking about no frog in Jerusalem. She was not talking about the new dairy product that they released on the Jerusalem shelf. She was talking about Moses. See, you don't like me because I'm a prophet. If you don't like this word, it's because I'm a prophet. See, when a prophet comes to your life, we come to tell you the truth. We didn't come to be your friend. We ain't come to be somebody you like. We didn't come so that you can feel good about our message. We came to tell you how God feels about matters, about situations, about events, about you. Bible said, 
If you love mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. Your mother and father can tell you, don't, don't follow Prophet Joshua Holmes and God, God put you with Prophet Joshua. Betray them. Your, 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 your little children, your daughter, your son comes. I don't think that you should be following Prophet. Betray them. Stop holding on to people that's holding on to the devil. Stop holding on to people that's holding on to the devil. Because you will spend all eternity in heaven with who you protect. Who you agree with. Who you stand with. I can't get that out of my head. The Bible says two will be. Two will be laying down in the bed. One will be taken away. And one will be left. I can't get that out of my head. I can't get that out of my head. The Bible said that there'll be two laying down in the bed. One will be taken away and one will be left. I can't get it out of my head. Do you know that even in marriage, God will not judge you jointly. He will judge you separately. That shows you, woman, your job is to submit yourself Man, your job is to love. If the woman doesn't want that, if the man does not want that, God going to judge you separately on your functionality. Then it said two will be moving in the field. One will be taken away. One will be left behind. Saints, the field represent workplace. And let me say this too. It also represent preachers. The father spoke to me and told me that it also represent preachers. Because preachers are in the same field. All of them are preaching. It said one will be taken away and one will be left behind. Because even a preacher could be preaching. And if they are negligent of sowing seeds of discord in people's heart. And causing people to hate their leader and hate their prophet and hate their man of God. God will judge that preacher. I'm going to say this because I know that the preacher watched me, but I'm not scared of him and he know who I am. There was a preacher was on, 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 on his broadcast talking about Prophet Joshua Holmes is a fake prophet. I don't care how nice he is. That fool took down his, his broadcast. Don't act like God trying to use you. You're talking against God himself. Anybody that talks against me is talking against God himself. And I've never seen anybody that talk against me that fared well. You can't pit your mouth on God's man, God's woman, God's elect and get away. You better learn and teach your children the fear of God. We live in a generation where everybody want to teach their child how to sing and teach their child how to dance and teach their child how to move and teach their child how to jump and teach their child how to play sports and talk about this going to be the next Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa and Michael Jordan. We teach our child how to be the next LeBron James, but we won't teach them the fear of God and how to tell the Lord thank you and how to move in the spirit and how to walk in the Holy Ghost and how to pray in the spirit and how to read the word and how to follow the rudiments of God. You, oh child of God, take on a different approach to life. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Begin to take up your cross. Begin to follow this gospel and release it to your children. Release it to their minds. Release it to their body. Whoa! Take your liberty and preach this gospel. Don't care about who want to hear it in public. When you go in public, don't worry about if they want to arrest you. Don't worry about if they want to attack you. Preach the gospel. I still do it today with all the power and glory I got on me. I still preach the gospel. I still tell people that Jesus loves them. I still tell them that Jesus saves. I still talk to the stranger. I still talk to the homeless. I still talk to the naysayer. And I tell them that Jesus is Lord. Whoa! I still talk about this gospel to 
to people I meet in public, people that never knew me a day in their life, I still tell them about this solid rock that delivered me, this Jesus that set me free, this Jesus that healed my body, this Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better not get lukewarm. You better not get lukewarm just because God give you a little house, just because God give you a little sex, just because God give you a little money. You might not get everything that you want. You might not see everything that you desire, but give yourself to Jesus. Don't casualize time. Sometimes you sit next to somebody. Other day I was sitting next to somebody. The Lord had me look over. The Lord said this. Hey person. I had them sit next to you. I had them sit next to you. And I went go tell them. I said hey. Jesus love you. That person right there was looking at me. They said, really? After all I done did, why would he love me? I said, listen, it's not about all you did. It's about all he did. It don't got nothing to do with all you did. It's about all he did. And all he did was remove all that you did. I said, all you got to do is just receive him and change. You, you, you don't even got to spend the time trying to figure out how you're going to change. All you got to do is just come to him, let him take over. He do all the changing. Just be willing. That's all you got to do. The Bible said you be willing and obedient. Willingness is an attitude. Obedience is an action. Willingness is something that you think. Obedience is something that you do. Be different. Know why you're here. You're not here just to drive cars. You're not here just to live in, in, in luxury. You're here because God sent you to expose the world to him. That's why you're here. God promised that you'll live good because he's blessing you for doing that. And say, some of you all say, you know what, prophet, you know, I, da, 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 da. Listen, when you help me do it, you're doing it too. Some of you are going to find out that on the day of judgment, that everybody, prophet Joshua Holmes, won to Jesus, you won them to Jesus. Because it was money that I used to publish the gospel. It was money that I used to reach souls. It was money that I used to get this word of the Lord out. So you say, you know, I never did that. I don't do that. Listen, you do that when you're, when you're, when you're connected to me. Every time you sow money into me and you support me, every soul that I'm winning, you will have a reward for that soul because you empowered me to do it. This is not the day for you to care about your image, your life, and what people think about you. And this is not the day for you to seek the presence of people that God has not put you with. This is the day to be sanctified. Saints, I was looking in the text and God gave me a powerful revelation. In the book of Genesis, it talked about how God, he made the heavens and the earth and, and all these different things. And the Bible said on the seventh day, he made it holy. And it shocked me. He said on the seventh day, he made it holy. And I thought about it. He made it holy. Why, why wasn't the other days made holy? Why God did not make the other days holy? He waited to the seventh day and then declared, I'm going to make this seventh day holy. And I thought about it. Why did God wait to this seventh day to finally say, I'm going to make this seventh day holy? What is God thinking about here? 
Why God didn't say, I'm going to make the fifth day holy, the third day holy, the second day holy, the first day holy. He waits to the seventh day. And the father began to give me a revelation. And in Genesis chapter two, verse three. That word holy really represents the word sanctified. Saints, I want you to see this. After God works, he sanctifies himself. You say, prophet, why would God have to sanctify himself? Or what's the purpose of God sanctifying himself? What's the law of this? Why does God, after he finished working, need to sanctify himself? So that what he produced would not be lost. Saints, if you look at your life, if you don't have what God said in the word, if you're not living the type of life that God told you you were living the word, it's not because God don't want to give it to you. It's because after you have done things toward it, you would mess up what you did and you never sanctified yourself. You let people talk in your ear. You let people take away your focus. You let people take away your excitement, your expectation. They, they, they so see a discord in your heart make you think that God don't want you to have that or do that or even proceed with that and all your life you've been cutting yourself short because you never sanctified yourself saints I'm going to say something to you listen to this how did Jonah know that Nineveh was wicked? Because Jonah did not live in Nineveh. Ah. Uh, saints, I'm loving these broadcasts because I really feel a fire on me right now. I feel a fire of God on me. I feel the fire of the Holy Spirit on me. And saints, there's miracles taking place. The angel of favor is moving in this time with the prophet. Those of you who are listening to me with a pure heart. Who? How did he find out that Nineveh was wicked? Number one, he didn't live in Nineveh. Who told him that they was wicked? How did he know that they was wicked? You, you do not see God sent him to Nineveh. If God sent him to Nineveh, that means that Nineveh was spoken as a destination that he would have to travel to. It was not a destination in which he was already acquainted with. It was a destination that he had to leave where he was to get there. So how does he know that Nineveh is wicked? He does not know that Nineveh is wicked because he lives there or he has seen it with his own eyes. He knows that Nineveh is wicked because of what? People. Yeah, he heard them talking about, yeah, Nineveh. You heard about Nineveh? You heard about the shooting in Nineveh today? Yeah, yeah. You heard about how the man killed his wife in Nineveh today? Yeah, yeah. You heard about them children that stabbed their mom in Nineveh today? Yeah, yeah, you heard about those people that got drunk and, and was driving drunk and they killed the little elementary students in the bus, huh? Did you hear about how the government is changing in Nineveh and now they're creating all these abortions and, and, the, and, and the president of Nineveh and everybody is just lawless and everybody is out of control? Did you hear about that shooting at Nineveh's elementary school? Did you say, I'm, I'm giving you a visual here that Jonah stops listening to God because of people. And he's telling God what people told him. Children, how many times do you listen to people more than you listen to God and then have the nerves to tell God in your mind what people said? No, no, no. You may not got the gall to say it with your actual lips, but in your mind, you think in it. In your mind, you contemplating it. In your mind is inside of you. In your mind, you're letting.
letting it deliberate within you. You're conversating with the very thing that God does not want you to conversate with and is inside of your system and is inside of your memory and is inside of your decision making process. And in all actuality, you're not saying it with your mouth, but your heart is speaking to God. And that's why God began to declare to even the prophet Jeremiah. He said that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Why? Because the heart is having conversations with things that God even declared in Genesis 6 that the thoughts of their heart was evil continually. It was the thoughts that Jesus began to talk to the disciples about and begin to even tell them that out of the heart proceed out of the it proceed murders and and it proceed all these wicked things and saints remember the Lord Jesus when he was healing someone he will always talk to their heart the Bible said that he knew that their thoughts were wicked he knew what they were thinking he knew what they thought about before they said one word, Jesus knew what they were contemplating. Before they said anything, they didn't have to say, Lord, I think that you're lying. Lord, you shouldn't have told that man this. Lord, you shouldn't have even spoke that. You blaspheming against God. Saints, if you ever meet a true prophet, the same thing they said about Jesus, they'll say about their prophet. If you ever meet a true prophet, Joshua Holmes, they're going to say to you the same thing that they said about Jesus. They call Jesus a blasphemer. They call Jesus an adulterer. They call Jesus a liar. They call Jesus the antichrist. They call Jesus a lunatic. They call Jesus a false prophet. That's why Jesus said, a prophet is without honor in his own country. Why? Because Jesus was functioning as prophet in that, in, that, in that statement. Jesus would switch offices. When he was at the Beatitude, he was the teacher. When he was saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, he was the evangelist. When he was saying, uh, uh, my sheep know my voice, he was the pastor. My sheep, he was the pastor. When he said the prophet is without honor in his own country, he was the prophet. When he said, I give you power two by two, go heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, preach the gospel. He was the apostle. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I think that's in Psalm 118. Letting the word of God penetrate your heart. The Bible said, I believe in Colossians chapter 3, it said, let the word of Christ dwell in your heart richly in all wisdom. It said, let the word of God, word of Christ dwell in your heart richly in all wisdom. Let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell in your heart. Now, since the fact that it said the word of Christ, I'm going to say something to you that you never heard before. It's not just saying the words of Jesus. It's also saying that the words of the Christ that God will send to you, meaning that if God sends a man of God to you, they are a Christ to your life. They come to anoint you the same way God told Elijah, go anoint Elisha in your place. The same way he told him go to anoint him, the same way Elijah was an Elisha, the same, uh, uh, he was a Christ rather, Elijah was a Christ. The same way when God told Moses, I want you to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, it was the same way that Moses represented Christ and he was the deliverer telling Pharaoh, which represented Satan, to let the people go, let them go out of sin, let them go out of deception, let them go out of poverty, let them go out of curses. Let them go out of the sweat of the brow because the sweat of the brow was operated from the day of Adam all the way to the day of Moses because all the people of God was underneath that Babylonian system. All the people of God was underneath that slavery. Let my people go. So I said, let the word of Christ, 
So that means even when your prophet come to you, let their word dwell in you richly. Let their word dwell in you. That means don't let it be removed by conversations with people. Don't let it be removed because you offended. Don't let it be removed because you think that your prophet should not have said that. He should not have done that. Don't let it be removed just because you got a bald head mama or a bald head daughter that come to you and tell you that I don't think that you should be listening to him. Stop letting people change you from the will of God for your life. You're not willing to suffer that hell fire with them. So just go ahead and tell them it's cool. You you gonna have to abandon me. You gonna have to call me that I'm no longer your son, your daughter. You gonna tell me that I'm no longer your mama, your pap. Yeah, that's fine because I rather go to heaven and be rejected by you than to be accepted by you and to be rejected by God in hell for all eternity. Saints. In hell, you're not even going to care about who slandered you. In hell, you're not even going to care about people laughing at you. You're not In hell, you're not going to care about people calling you brainwashed. In hell, you're not going to care about people calling you a fool. In hell, you're not going to care about people call. No, no. All that stuff that people call you in this life, it don't even avail to the pain. It don't even compare to the torment of hellfire. So what shall you do? Surrender to Jesus. Leave all of your stipulations, all of your inward conversations. Surrender to Jesus. Say, Lord, whatever you have for my life, I say yes to you. I'm not trying to keep people in my life. I'm not trying to get people to understand me. I'm not trying to get people to like me. Father, in Jesus' name, all I want is your perfect will. And as all I want is your plan. And all I want is your doings. And all I want is your ways. I don't care if anybody calls me names or they try to slander me or they try to embarrass me. You can't embarrass a dead man. You can't embarrass somebody that has been crucified with Christ. You can't embarrass somebody that has laid down their life on the altar because the fact that I have my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, there's nothing embarrassing about spending all eternity in streets of gold with the creator of the universe. There's nothing embarrassing about escaping a fool that was cast out of heaven and was thrown down into corruptivity and into this place where there was no victory and no glory and no victory and there's nothing wrong there's nothing foolish about escaping someone that was defeated not even by God but by archangel of God there's nothing stupid about not listening to the very one that God removed him from his position. See, something that you're going to have to catch is that, is my eye evil? Because when I connect with my man of God, God told me to connect with him. Why do I find myself going all over the place mentally? Is that really God or is that me? Because God told me to connect. So if anything is messing up my connection, is God the author of confusion? Does God send me to a place and then make me not want to be there? Wow. <laughs> does God tell me? 
Does God tell me I want you to do this and then give me all the reasons to destroy my energy to do it? Wow. When the word of God tells you in Philippians 2 that it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Is God that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. That means that is God the one that's actually giving you the desire to do what he instructed you to do. So if any time you feel that your desire is dying... If you feel that your desire is leaving you, it's not because God is doing it. It's because Satan is trying to send the wiles of his kingdom in your direction. But you are not ignorant of the devices of Satan. You'll continue and proceed with God. The word of God said run and not be weary. It said walk and not faint. It told you that if you don't faint, you shall reap in due season. He told you that if you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see? So here you, you see something here. I just need to know where God want me to be. So if I know who he wants me to be with and where he wants me to be, I can know that anything that comes against it is the devil. Why did the Lord Jesus, Master Jesus, tell Peter, get thee behind me, Satan? Because the Lord knew that Peter was going against what the father already told him. See, saints, this is what you got to remember for the rest of your life. God is having you listen to prophet Joshua Holmes. So anybody that comes to you with another message, I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care if it's your wife. I don't care if it's your children. I don't care who it is. It's the devil talking to you because the Lord already said what he wanted to say. And saints, it's not just me. I admire people in other ministries that stay connected to their man of God. I admire them. Because that's that's that's. That's how I rock. I'm not a disloyal person. That's how I rock. I stay in my lane. That's how I rock. I admire people that stick with their man of God. When I see other people some more in their man of God, I don't recruit them. I rejoice. I rejoice. There's a heavy anointing on people that push their man of God. And there's a special reward on those that take care of their prophet. Many people get around a prophet. They don't know why they're around the prophet. They think it's because of money, fame, and all type of different stuff. But there are people that get around a prophet because they want to take care of that prophet. And those are the people that remain. People that get around a prophet, they don't know that once you get around a prophet, Joshua Holmes, your life is underneath judgment. There are some of you all, you have been in this ministry for years. You have seen people that would rebuke you and tell you, you better listen to prophet. And the next man, they was trying to get you to leave. Is that God? <laughs> because saints, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Saints, even Joshua stood here. His life is underneath judgment. I saw him twice because God is judging him. He saw me on the ninth. God is judging him. I saw him around the first. God is judging him. When you see Juan stand by me, God is judging his life. Everybody that I bring close to me, God is judging them. But see, I want to show you something. This is still the seed that Joshua sowed last night. This is still the seed. You see what he does. He's smart. Because if you're underneath judgment, that means that you're going to be attacked by Satan and God is going to let it happen. But look what God does. And, and one, that little thing, you know, you, you experience Satan attacking you too. If he don't do this, he can very well miss. But as long as he does this, and he honors me, he can't miss because there's no deception in honor. There's only deception in dishonor. Absalom was in dishonor. That's why he was so deceived. He couldn't see that his daddy was the anointed of God. 
Saints, you imagine the ludicrous that he's fighting a warrior of God. Saul did not win in fighting David, but look at Absalom. Absalom is trying to kill his own dad. This is God's beloved and he's trying to kill him. He's deceived, but he's not honoring. There's no deception in honor. There's no deception in honor. I, I'm going to say this again. There's no deception in honor. Saints, the only people that have ever been deceived in my life were people that were non sowers If you're a real sower, you can't be deceived. If you're honoring your man of God and taking care of your man of God with a pure heart, you can't be deceived. You never see the Shunammite woman listen to anybody call Elisha a false prophet. No, because she fed him. She opened up windows in her house, in, in her room. She said, I want to build on a place. And she even told her husband. And never do you ever see her turn against Elisha. Because there's no deception in honor. And saints, I'm telling you this year, all of you all that's listening to me is the spirit of God having you listen to me. Because this is your hour to return to your vow. You was the one that prayed and told God, Lord, let your will be done in my life. You were the one that prayed and said, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to please you. You were the one that told the Lord, Lord, I want you to use me. Use me for your glory. Use my life. You were the one that said that to him. And now he takes you up on the offer. Don't lose. So many people pray, Lord, I want your will for my life. I want your will. He sends a prophet to them. They kill the prophet. Jerusalem cried out. We want a savior. We want a savior. Jesus comes on the scene and they say, crucify him. John chapter one, verse 11 declares, I came to my own and my own received me not. Why did he say I came to my own? These were people that he was supposedly supposed to be owning. These were people that said, I belong to you. I surrender. My life is not my own. They said it. And then when he comes, they say, crucify him. He's blaspheming. Saints, don't lose. Don't lose. And I want to say this to you. Go to Jesus. Stop acting like you some slave and you don't know nothing. If you have anything troubling you, go to the Lord Jesus Christ and be delivered. Go to him. Stop going to people. And saints, I want to say this to you as well. I noticed that people that are wicked, they don't go to God. They go to people. Look at people. They go to social media. You'll never see anybody that's being used by God to do something You'll never see them go that route. People that are, are used by the devil, they don't want to hear about God. They, they, they just go to people. They go to lawless people. They go to sinful people. Uh, they, 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 they go to people that are not even heaven bound because they don't want nobody to turn them and convict them for what they're doing. And they run away from you if you're going to tell them the right. I have never seen somebody that loves God destroy. I've never seen. But we live in a generation where people, they're having church feuds. There's people, they have a church feud and then they get on social media and talk about their pastor. And they talk about, oh, is God using me? Oh, oh, I can't. Is God talking to me? And you people that follow these men and women on social media that's always slandering men of God, you will drop in the pit of hell with them. Mark my words. And, and you, no, no, you can say, you can say, oh, oh, no, 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 it's not like that. No, no, no. 
If you following people that are slandering prophets and slandering ministries and slandering other people, you are going to drop in the pit of hell with them on the day of judgment. You may think that is a game. You may think that no, it's not like that, but you'll find out that the father wasn't playing with them and he wasn't playing with you. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God don't care if you think that David is wrong. He don't care if you think that Moses is wrong. You're going to drop in the pit of hell with them. You fall in their accounts. You listening to their broadcasts and you talking about you a prophet. You talking about you love God and you talking about you want the will of God for your life. And you let it all that drama in your system. You a witch just like them. You better repent and be saved from this generation that's full of homosexual men and lesbian women that are trying to tear down the church. You fall in these homosexuals, these men, these spirits, these lesbian demons that's trying to destroy the church and you sitting there talking about you prophetic. Yeah, prophetic where? You fall in God's enemies as they try to accuse the church and bring the church down and call the church a mockery and call the people of God a mockery. And God is the only judge. And you fall in their accounts. You going straight to hell with them. Y'all going to share the same cell. I wouldn't be shocked if God picked the same demons to poke you in the butt like them. All these people up there calling yourself prophetic and you, you fall in these accounts that's full of drama. How are you a prophet of God, a woman of God, a man of God, and you like listening to mess? You like listening to all type of stuff of negativity. You like watching that. You like looking there and you say, oh, I'm not doing it, but you right there listening. Real prophets don't do that. Real prophets don't do that. Real prophets, we are prayer warriors. Real prophets, we have our face in God's business. Real prophets, we are listening to the Father speaking to us. We're waiting for a word from God. Not no homosexual. We're not waiting for no word from no lesbian. The father looking for people that will stand by their prophet. Stand by their man of God. Some people will never be grateful. I've met many people like that. You can give them everything and they still are jackasses. I've met many people like that. I've delivered many people from lifestyles that were slavery and they're still jackasses. I've met many people that are jackasses. And you that don't know about life, you act like everybody is right. No. There are going to be people in every ministry that come to a ministry with wrong reasons. There are people that come to ministries and they come to ministries because they want you to listen to them. They want you to deem them and feel sorry for them. No, we don't feel sorry for you. You are not the man of God. You are not who God told us to listen to. You are just a witch or a warlock because you're in a ministry trying to get attention on you. And God didn't anoint you with no word. He didn't anoint you with no instruction. He didn't anoint you with no ability to deliver me from sin. We have a lot of people like that. Over my years in ministry, I've met so many people like that. I had somebody come to my ministry one time, said, uh, well, prophet, I believe it's my time to preach. It's, it's, it's my time for people to hear me. And so I said nothing. 
I said nothing. The person got mad at me and said, oh, you just don't want me to come take over your ministry. You just don't want people to hear me, right? You scared that I'm going to take over. I said nothing. The father spoke in my ear and said, you see, hear this jackass was nothing, a vagabond, didn't have money to feed nobody. You take them underneath your wings. You give them an opportunity to become somebody. You make them royalty. You train them how to clean their behind. They don't know how to clean their behind. They don't know how to smell good. They don't know how to even be mannerable. They don't know how to conduct themselves around royalty. You train them how to be royalty. And now, oh, you scared of me. You, you scared that I'm going to... I remember there, there, was, there was a person in my ministry, there was a young man. The young man didn't have money to even get a haircut. I was preaching at a place and I was, I was almost late for my meeting. I said, wait. I, I was getting ready for my meeting. I said, wait. The Lord just spoke to me. I said, let's go find the nearest barber. I said, let's go cut his hair and make sure that he looked good. Now, mind you, nobody is coming to see him. Nobody is looking at him. Nobody cares that he even there. But here's prophet Joshua Holmes. I let the young man travel with me. I pay for his ticket. I pay for his room. I even took care of things concerning his own personal life that he needed. Train him to take care of his children. Train him to move as a real man. Do you know that the end result of the man was, you just jealous of me? You just want to be like me? That was the final thing the man began to tell people. He just jealous of me. He want to be just like me. Saints, these are our true stories. So you imagine my mind when I'm dealing with people, I know the witchcraft that a lot of people are in. It don't matter if they're in the ministry. That was his end result. I'm jealous of him. I'm trying to be like him. The one that I stopped my meeting to make sure that he could have a haircut. The one that I'm paying for his rooms. I'm taking care of him. But I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous of him. I'm trying to be him. Me, I'm moving in the power. I knocked you down. <laughs> I knocked you down. Not once, not twice. I knocked you down more than three times. I'm trying to be like you. I don't care how big they was. I still knocked them down. But before people look and say, Father, this is somebody that has helped me. This is somebody that has delivered me. Let me help them. Let me bless them. You know what they do? Let's kill him. I know that the Father has let me experience great wickedness in my life so that I can come and tell you. The father told me today, he said, son, I'm going to have you get on here and talk to the people to warn them for this year and for the rest of their life. I'm going to have you talk to them and have a heart to heart with them so that no witch, no warlock, no demon come speak in their ear after you and come tell them stuff. Prophet Joshua Holmes don't have a voice. I'm not sending nobody to you. Y'all got access to me on this line. I'm the most active minister with a fresh word in the world. You're not going to find nobody that comes and teaches their flock at the level I do with fresh material from God every single moment. You're not going to find it nowhere. 
with a fresh word, no recycled message. I listen to God to minister to you. And so I'm setting order in this JHM. There is not another. I don't have nobody I'm sending to you. I don't have nobody that's coming with a message from me. You hear my voice. You know me. And if you choose otherwise, that's on you. My blood is not on your shoulders. My, my blood, uh, your blood is not on my shoulders. I'm not pitting nobody in charge because I've never met anybody that the devil couldn't speak to. The devil, the devil, the only person the devil can't speak to, to speak his words, is me. So I'm the only one that's going to, you're going to see for the rest of your life. You're not going to see Prophet Joshua Holmes promote no daggone by because everybody I have promoted was a jackass. And I have to talk like this because too many times you, you see the man of God silent and you pit, you pit such an emphasis on other people and you start trying to follow them. Oh, I want to be friends with them. No, they're underneath the man of God. You can't trust them. The minute they get offended, the minute that they want to act childish, the minute that they let the devil enter them is the minute that now the very ones that were saying that the man of God is so good and he's so amazing. Oh, and this is Jesus. Oh, and this the one that done changed my whole life. He done changed my whole family. He done changed my whole finance he done changed my whole sin life and now now that's a different story so you're not gonna find no other face when i was with dr mike murdoch i didn't want nobody to see my face it was Dr. Mike Murdoch that came to me and told me, I want you to minister. I never went to Dr. Murdoch and said, Mur Dr. Murdoch, I think it's my time. You know, I'm a prophet. I done moved in miracle ministry. Dr. Murdoch heard about me because somebody had a last minute death and they came to my service and I healed them by the power of Jesus and they had the, the, the verdict change. Their diagnosis was changed. I didn't come to Dr. Murdoch and say, Dr. Murdoch, you know, I have a healing ministry. You know, I have a powerful ministry. I think it's my time to go forth. And um, I just feel impressed by God to tell you it's my time to start moving in my, my grace. It's, it's my time. And, and the Lord spoke to me and told me that uh, it, it's time for you to release me into that. Not one time. Juan will tell you. And, and as I stand in the presence of God, even if Dr. Murdoch ever needed what I used to help alongside with in the ministry, if he ever needed it, I'm there. I remember telling Dr. Murdoch one time, if you ever need me for anything, if you call me, I'll leave what I'm doing to help you. And that's my mindset. It's still my mindset. Not everybody comes into a ministry with that same mind. There's people that come with different agendas. You can't trust people like that. You can't trust people like that. Imagine if Lucifer came into heaven and said, hey, the father has forgiven me. Yeah, but you led a whole one third of angels with you. You be over there. <laughs> you be over there. Yeah, I see you, but you be over there, nigga. Because you still a nigga. You still a nigga. We, we forgive you, but you is a nigga. You's a nigga. And you, you, you is a nigga. And everybody connected to you is a nigga. So many niggas that we meet in life, we try to we try to cover the niggas, we try to protect the niggas, we try to talk good for the niggas. No, you is a nigger. Niggas fight prophets. Niggas. You never see white people. Look at white people. You never see white people doing videos on men of God. Look at you. You never see white people fighting other. Pro look at look at white ministers. You never see them going at each other. It's only niggas. 
You never see that happen. It's only niggas. Niggas, only niggas. You don't. You never see white people leaving their church and talking about, "Oh, my pastor died." You know, you just see niggas. That's the only people you see doing that. Even white people, they they ain't grow up in that culture. Yeah, white people trifling. They got their own nature of doing stuff, but they don't operate like that. I promise you that. You won't see them doing the stuff that you, we see going on in black people. You can feed a black person. You can house a black person. The black person is still going. They still going to talk about you like a dog. I don't. I don't seen it all. I remember the first meeting I ever did. The people was inside. Of, and Juan was there. The people was inside of my meeting. And there was two people inside of the meeting that was they in the intermission. They pulled people out during the meeting while we was in intermission, while we was taking a break, rather, and begin to talk to the people about me. Now, mind you, these were the same people that moments ago had said that they had a vision that Jesus told them that this prophet is leading you to heaven. Is me in him. And then in the next the next couple moments, they're telling people, Oh, you you should really be careful. You know, you should leave the ministry. Huh? God telling me that you shouldn't follow him. Saints, I've seen it all. There's nothing I haven't seen. There's nothing I haven't seen. So, Saints. I know some of you are getting angry and saying, you know, they crazy. But let me just tell you this. I want to say this too. Do you know how many people have sat on my line when I have talked about this and said people were crazy and they are not here? Go look at the broadcast when I did this last year and the same people that were saying that are not here. So while you're saying that people are crazy, let me say this to you. Don't become the crazy that you call people. Because I remember meeting people and, I, I, and they say, Prophet, how do you put up with this? And, and they're the same ones. They're the same ones. And those of you all that have followed me for years, you know that I'm not lying. Those are the same ones that they sit there. They say, man, how could they do this? And then they are the same ones that do it. So you listening to the rawest word you can ever hear in your life. And I'm only talking like this because I'm a prophet of God. And the father told me, he commanded me to talk like this because he's not playing no games. He's not playing with you. He don't care if you think you're a sexy man. He don't care if you think that you're a sexy woman. If you cross him, he's going to cross you back. And that go for everybody. And I, I'm telling you because saints, the Lord Jesus told me, he said, son, so many people up there praying for a revival in America. But he said, son, why would I send forth my glory when these people's hearts are so carnal? They cuss each other out. They talk about their leaders. They have no honor. And then they want me to send my power and demonstrate my, my kingdom for their good when I'm grieved. Saints, you go show me anybody that has slandered prophets. Show me them moving in the demonstration of the spirit for real. Sh show me. You're not going to find it. Because confusion does not work with demonstration. Demonstration and confusion are not friends. So if somebody is a slanderer, you go show me where they're moving in the gifts of the Spirit. The, or not in the gifts of the Spirit, the demonstration of the Spirit. Where they're moving in the power of God. Because gifts can be so, so, so tricky. Show me where they're moving in the demonstration of the Spirit. Demonstration. Demonstration. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see it. Because confusion and demonstration do not go together. It does not work like that. 
The whole motive for ministry is love. And if you can't love, leave it alone. The Bible says love does no harm. But we look at so many people, look how they try to harm each other. Oh, she said this about me. Oh, the love, I'm coming on here. The love, uh, yeah, and she, and she the one that. Uh, uh, uh. Look at people's behavior. Okay, go show me, go show me her moving in the gifts, the power of God. Show me her healing the sick, raising the dead. Show me. Show me her delivering people from captivity. Show me. No, you're not going to see it. Because confusion does not move in that same aspect. Jesus looking for people that's not going to be workers of Satan in destroying his kingdom. But they are going to be someone of prayer. They're going to be someone of honor. They're going to be someone of consistency. And he can trust them with his presence. God can't trust a lot of people with his presence because they get around his presence and they try to destroy his presence. There are people that God don't want in his presence because they carry the spirit of falling away. The spirit of falling away. It will not bring you into a place of thinking about how you can help your man of God. It brings you into places of wickedness. It makes you an enemy of God's work. And, and, and that goes for JHM. Saints, as long as I keep niggas away from me, there will be nothing happen to my ministry. As long as I keep niggas away. You keep niggas away. And th that's how it's going to be. Let me just tell you something. I don't care if I like you. If I don't like who you with, I'm not going to be around you. So listen, daughter, you might say, listen, son, you might say, well, prophet, uh, why, why you don't talk to me so much? I don't talk to people that's talking to my enemies. I don't hang with people that hangs with my enemies. You see Joshua, you see, you see, um, you see, um, you see, uh, my other son, you see, uh, Juan. You not going to find them hanging with my enemies. And if you ever do, you're not going to never see them with me. I'm becoming more militant about God in this divine assignment because I noticed over the years People come inside of this assignment and they ain't never been through nothing. They didn't go through the, the, the suffering, the torment, the issues I went to to become disanointed. They never been through nothing. So when they come in the midst of this, they just try to destroy it because it's not nothing that they've been through to get here. They wasn't with me when I was 14 and 15 and 16 and 17. They was not with me when I was going through my process with God. These are people that haven't been processed. They just went to church. They just read a little scriptures. They just moved in the form of godliness. They never been through nothing. So then they come in here and they try to have a voice and they try to up their talk, their talk and they ain't been through nothing. So I'm going to I'm guard this thing like a hawk. I'm going to guard it like a hawk because this year this year, you see how President Trump sent that bomb over there and killed that leader? This not only the year of the prophets, it's a year of war. And I'm staying focused on this war. And I'm in a place of prayer. Ay, ya, 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 And I'm telling you that this is the hour. This is the hour people that want to play around and they want to try, go ahead. Go ahead. Because once the Lord Jesus sent fire to the earth, he said, oh, I wish I could send fire to the earth. Oh, how I wish it was kindled. Once the five got moving, that's where the Lord bring order. And every year he brings order. 
And saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. As long as you keep your eyes on me, don't keep your eyes on nobody. Don't look at who you think connected to me because Prophet Joshua Holmes not going to advertise no daggone body. Because I've never met anybody that have defeated the devil when he speaks to them. I'm the kingpin up in here. JHM is Prophet Joshua Holmes ministry. And so anybody that come to you talking about, oh, Prophet sent me to you. And oh, I have a word from Prophet. That's not me. And let me say this too. And I'll be as sarcastic as possible. I only got two children. I only got two daughters in the earth. And I'm going to be as raw as possible. Anybody ever tell you that I got three children? I got I got uh, uh, another pregnant child. Anybody tell you some nonsense? Here, as I stand before God, I only got two children. And I, I'm going to tell you like this. Their name is Ava Grace Holmes and Zendaya Glory Holmes. All right. All right. Prophet Joshua Holmes is the leader of JHM Ministries. I'm the end time prophet that been sent to the earth for this assignment. And the father spoke to me and told me to tell the people of God in this broadcast when I send you to Prophet Joshua Holmes, stay connected to Prophet Joshua Holmes. It's not Prophet Joshua Holmes and it's not Prophet Joshua Holmes and somebody else. No. It's Prophet Joshua Holmes. If you want to make it, Stay connected to me. There's nobody that stays connected to me that don't make it. Some of y'all been with me for years. Some of y'all just been with me for a year or two. And there's been people here for five and six years. And they never change. So, and I'm, I'm going to say this too. And I'm going to say this on there, raw anointing. If you get lack of daisy, God got a replacement for you. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't care if it piss you off. I don't care if you get offended. I'm going to preach this word that God gave to me. If you think that you are that and dot, 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 and you get lackadaisy and inconsistent, God going to raise up somebody else for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. There's no 10-month pregnancy or elephant pregnancy. <laughs> You're going to have many rise up with elephant pregnancies. They are elephant. We're going to have to find the elephant that impregnated them. We're going to have to find the, the elephant. There was an elephant that impregnated them, gave them babies. Don't worry, it might be 21 months. And people be praying for 21 months now. It's judgment and justice, baby. It's judgment and justice. Remember, prophet preached that it's judgment and justice. I'm, I'm 21 months. I'm the first. God said he going to do a new thing. Yeah, he doing a new thing, all right. He doing a new thing, all right. He doing a new thing. Judgment, justice, baby. What's the baby name? Judgment, justice. <laughs> Judgment, justice, heavenly seat. <laughs> Above the heavens. Stay connected to me. And saints, let me say this again. If you think that you are that and, and da, da, da. Don't let nobody outwork you and outdo you and think that you ain't going to get replaced. 
you will get replaced. Let me tell you something. I knew this long time ago. That's why I'm a workhorse for Lord, for the Lord. The father spoke to me and he told me, he said, son, I'm going to make you rest more this year. That's what he said to me. I'm going to make you rest more than this year. That's what the father told me. He said, you always going for me and I can call on you and you do stuff that I don't even tell you to do just because you on fire for me. God should not have to be telling you that you need to turn up. God should be telling you, hey, you done turned up so much. Let me give you some rest. That's why he gave me the revelation about. Remember, I gave you that revelation about what they say, um, the revelation about uh, the seventh day, how he rested. That's why the father gave me that revelation. He gave me that seven day revelation because he was talking to me about me. He told me that's why I'm letting you rest. Because you keep going for me. Saints, let us return back to our first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Jesus be exalted in our hearts. Let us walk in his ways and his spirit and his will. And let's not do it just because, hey, I think that this is the will of God, so I'm going to do it. My son, uh, Joshua, he was there last night where after the broadcast, we saw something. And he witnessed it for himself. And I told my son, I said, son, do you know? I said, do you know? And my son will tell you I'm telling the truth. I told him. I told him. He, he'll tell you that I'm not lying. I said, Joshua, do you know that how many people sat in this same seat and I showed them signs and they still cursed me? I told him. I said, do you know how many people that I allowed them to see the supernatural? I showed them sign after sign after sign and they still attack me. Saints, I'm telling you that while you look at other people and you say, oh, this person is dumb, this person is stupid. I'm telling you that you better make sure that the devil don't do to you what he did to them. I'm telling you, people of God, that if you don't watch and pray, you will fall into the very deceptions of Satan. If you, you got to go to God. You got to spend time with the Father. You got to pray for the love of God in your heart to love your leader. You have to do it. If you don't pray for the Father to give your impartation of the right spirit and the right heart and the right motive, you will fall like people that you call stupid. Because their same demons are going to talk to you. And what will you say? I've met many people that looked at other people and said, oh, how could they do this, prophet? And then that same person, just a matter of time, they did the same thing. How could you do that? You thought that they were foolish. How? And the same demon that had them do it was the same demon that has them do it. And like I said, some of you are, this is not a mystery to you. You have seen it happen. You have seen me with people that came to you and told you, you better listen to prophet. And then those same people are the ones. Ah. How? It is the father's will. It is the Father's will for you to yield to honor, submission, and the joy of the Lord. No matter what, never stray from this. 
Never stray from this. Yield to the Spirit and say, Father, not my will, your will be done. I talk, but I do this all in love. You have to understand for a man like me that have seen so many true, seen so many people choose hell, I have a right to talk like this. I've had people in my meetings that say, Prophet, I never felt the fire of God like that. And those same people would be the ones saying, crucify him. I said in my meeting, I was in Texas, and those of you all that was there, what did I kept warning you? I said, don't forget this. I said, three months later, I said, later on in life, don't forget this. The reason why I talk like that, that's the wise king talking to you. I'm warning you because I know that how strong the devil has deceived many in these last days. He's taking them to hell. He's taking them to hell. People are dying left to right and dropping in the bottomless pit. If your name not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, oh, what a scary day that will be. And saints, the Father is giving you wisdom to arm you. So that won't be you. So that won't be you. This is the time for it. Don't miss. Don't lose. Don't fail. It's very easy for you not to fail if you stay connected to your one voice, Prophet Joshua Holmes. There has never been someone that listened to me and failed. There's never been someone that listened to me and stayed broke. There's never been someone that listened to me. Even my mother listens to me. My biological mother was sick. My biological mother could tell you. My biological mother walks around like nothing. Nothing is holding her back. Even my biological mother. My biological mother is like the story of Jesus. Just like Mary was to Jesus and Jesus to Mary. My mother delivered me. I delivered her. And that's how that's 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 what the spirit wants. To you to guard your eternal life. That's what the spirit wants. For you to guard your eternal life. You know, the Lord took me. Last but not least, he took me. And I want you to keep this. The father took me and he brought me to that verse where he said, choose life or choose death. And he said, son, here's what this really means. He said, tell my people to choose eternal life. There are paths that represent hell and represent life. When the prophet comes into your life, that's the path that represents eternal life. Choose eternal life. There are so many people choosing hell. You say, how can people choose hell? They don't want to go to hell. No, no. I choose hell if I choose something that's contrary to what God picked for me. God said, I want you to listen to Prophet Joshua. No, I'm not listening to him. I'm not listening to him. He always joking around. He always up there talking about he hear angels. He talking about the angel talking to him. I don't believe angels talk to nobody. I believe it's only the Holy Ghost. I don't believe when the Bible said Elijah heard from the angel, tell him to come down after the for captain in the 50. I don't believe in all of that. I don't believe it. Just need to keep it simple. Just need to keep it simple. Back to the basics. I don't want to hear about all that stuff. They're talking about some seed, talking about seed, and all this seed. The only seed is the word of God. I'm not trying to get no preacher my money. I'm not trying to do all this stuff. And if I resist the plan God has for me, I resist God. Stick with my voice and you'll find the results. 
In my words are life, in my instructions is abundance, and in my commands is prosperity. I'm carrying eternal life for you. I don't follow the natural man. I follow the Bible. The Bible in Hosea 12, 13 said, by a prophet was Israel brought out. Brought out of sin, brought out of all demonic activity. And by a prophet was they preserved. Preserved from what? Evil. Psalm 121 talks about that you shall be preserved from evil. The prophet come to protect you from the evil way, the contrary way, the way that is against God's will. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you right now. And I decree over your life. See, I had to do this. I'm going to get into other stuff, but I had to do this. The father told me to do this. And this is very important. Don't casualize this. If you casualize this, you commit suicide. You kill yourself. Don't casualize this. I'm not doing this just because I felt like doing this. I'm doing this because the father told me to do it and to warn you. Don't listen to nobody and let nobody mess up the will of God for your life. And don't listen to your dumb self. Tell your dumb self, shut up. I'm not following you. I'm going to follow the spirit. Don't let your dumb self say anything to you and make you miss God. Make a decision. I'm following Jesus and that's all I pick. I'm not picking nothing else. You don't have to get that in your mind. I'm not going to hell for nobody. I'm not going to miss eternal life for nobody. Saints, you should just be in surrender mode. For the rest of this year, you're going to hear me. Uh, 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 and, and saints, I'm not, I'm not going to stay on this. I just did this because the father told me to do this. And watch the replay, listen to this. But remember... No prosperity, no wealth, no eternal life, no, no, no nothing going to happen for you correctly if you don't surrender all to Jesus. Saints, I'm telling you the reason why God has blessed me, the reason why God has done what he has done for me, because I made him my Lord. I gave him all of me and I let him take me over and he can use me for whatever he wants. If he want me to say something, if he want me to think something, if he want me to do it, I surrender to him and let him do it. And I'm telling you, you better learn how to do that as well or else you're going to curse yourself. You're going to curse you. You're going to curse you. Don't curse you. Don't curse you. It's very simple. I come on all the time giving you the weapons of mass destruction so you don't curse you. You find a voice telling you to fight me. That's not God. I don't know how many times I got to utter this. I don't know how many times I got to say this. You, you hear thoughts in your mind telling you, oh, he not right. Oh, you need to up there check him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I, 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 that's not God. God is not going to send me to you and then have all type of stuff in you so that when he send me to you, you can't receive me. He not doing that, saints. He not doing that. So saints, get it in Jesus' mighty name.